Hey everybody, this is Alex Merced, and I want to talk about another feature of Dremio Cloud, and that is a feature called Reflections. Um, first, let's just kind of establish a baseline. So what Reflections are going to do is they're going to allow us to accelerate queries. Um, the way, the best way to appreciate Reflections is to kind of appreciate what they replace. So in a world without Reflections, so in a world outside of Dremio, you generally would want to either accelerate queries on raw tables, so on raw rows, or you'd want to accelerate queries, uh, aggregate queries for like BI dashboards. So typically to accelerate raw rows, raw table data, you would create what's called a materialized view. So you might have like a petabyte table, and then you have a one gigabyte view on it. So you only have this query that brings up one gigabyte of the data. And yeah, so instead of running the entire query again to get that one gigabyte of data, you create what's called a materialized view. So what it does, it generates a physical duplicate of those rows. Okay, just a raw duplicate of those rows. So that way, next time you want to look at that view, it doesn't actually have to query the petabyte table, it just gives you the one gigabyte results. Okay, which will be much faster because it doesn't have to do that processing work in between. Okay. Now, the issue with this is that it generally creates a whole new name. So you might have table A, and now the materialized view is called, you know, table A materialized or something, okay, or underscore mat for materialized. And now you have to know as the end user to query the other name. If not, you're still querying the full table. Okay, so that's one story. The other story is oftentimes when you create a BI dashboard, you're looking at uh, aggregate queries, oftentimes grouped by queries, where you're saying, hey, let me see the number of sales by day. Okay, so you're grouping by the date, and you're looking at the number of sales. Okay, now these queries can be very intense, especially when you're talking about huge scale data, like petabyte, terabyte scale data. Okay, so what happens, it can take really long to process these uh, on a BI dashboard, because every time you tweak the dashboard, it has to recalculate these numbers. So to speed this up, what you do is you try to pre-calculate these, cal these, these, um, these results. And one way to do that is through BI extracts or cubes. And what these are, are just basically physical constructs that have all these aggregations pre-calculated. Um, but Again, generally creates a whole other name, so you have to know to use the other name. And then for both of these materialized views, BA extracts and cubes, you have to maintain them, meaning you have to kind of figure out how to keep them up to date as the data changes. And oftentimes this results in creating duplicates or many versions of these things, and then you have to make sure you figure out how to clean them up. There's a lot of work that ends up being built around what seems like a simple solution. So reflections essentially eliminates all that work. It, it takes all of that all those questions and all those issues and puts them on automatic. So far as cleanup, maintenance, figuring out how to keep them in sync, Dremio is going to do that for you. That's win number one. Win number two is it doesn't create another namespace. So in this case, users would just query the same tables and views that they're used to querying. They're just going to notice it's faster. Once these reflections exist, Dremio will intelligently figure out, oh, okay, yeah, this query could benefit from this reflection. Um, and it will run the calculation to see if it, what theoretically, which one, which version would cost more. So should I just run it against the raw table or should I run it against one of the reflections that are built on this table? And it will choose whichever sort of the, the cheapest route to go, the quickest route to go. And then three, these aren't just a physical copy. So it's not just like a physical copy of rows. It's not just a, a it's an iceberg table under the hood. And again, that when you have an iceberg table, you have all that metadata that acts as an index. So essentially you not only have a data set, um, a, a physical copy that optimizes the performance, but then you also have all this sort of metadata that acts as an index to speed up the searching through that data. So you get a real optimized and oftentimes smaller version because again if you're if you're talking about a csv data set this is going to create parquet files so those parquet files are going to be much faster to scan much smaller in size um in a lot of cases so um you get just an overall optimized version under the hood that dremio will use and swap out when it makes sense okay and the cool thing is that it can swap it out not just for that view or table that you created the reflection on but for any of its child views so if I have table A and I created view C, a reflection on table A could be used to accelerate a query on view C, okay? 
So that's what reflections are. Reflections are essentially materialized views, be a replacement for materialized views, BI extracts, um, cubes that uh, eliminate a lot of the work, eliminate a lot of the pipelines that get created or to maintain these things. So it essentially reduces the number of pipelines you have, helps you accelerate in a much more easier way, makes it easier to use for the end user, and makes it easier to execute for the engineer. So now that I've sold it, really, well, let's just actually use it, okay? So first, let's do this on one of the, the sample tables. Uh, here we go. We have the taxi trips data. I'm going to use, actually, there's a parquet and an iceberg version. I'm going to do the parquet version um, just to kind of this, this see it. Okay, so first, let's take a look at how many records are in this table. Okay, so we're just going to do a count, and I just want to count every record in this table just so you can see that how many records are in this particular table. Okay. So you can see here, this record, this table has, yeah, around almost 340 million records. So this is not a small table by any means. Okay. <clears throat> now, what I want to do is I want to get the sum, okay, of the, I want to think it's the travel distance. So I have a tab over here that I can run the query on the whole table so I can get the column names. Okay. I mean, I could also run a describe query, but... It's early in the morning. Um, okay, so here we go. We're gonna do. We're gonna group. Basically, what I want to do is figure out what the total trip distance is for different numbers of passengers. Because the idea is like, are we are our taxis traveling more when it's one passenger, or are they traveling more when it's like two or three passengers? So we're gonna. I want to get the sum of the trip distance in miles. Okay, so I'm gonna go back to my tab here. Okay, sum of trip distance in miles. And we'll call this as total distance. And actually, I don't want the sum. I want the average. I want to know what the average distance is for a trip. So average, and we'll call this average distance. Okay. Now, I want this by the number of passengers. So I'm also going to want to get the passenger count as a field. And then I'm going to want to group it group the results by passenger count. Okay, and let me just make this a little bit easier to read. Okay, so again, I'm getting, what I'm basically getting is the average distance by passenger count. Okay, so these type of group by statements, what do they require an engine to do? Not just read the data, but they have to now group the data together, then they have to run these calculations, and then get me back the result. Okay, so again, imagine this on like petabyte scale data. Let's see how long it takes. This is just pure Dremio engine, no reflections yet. Okay, so I'm gonna hit run. Okay, and let's see how long it takes. Again, Dremio, uh, just the raw Dremio engine is pretty fast, so this should still be not take too long. But again, when we're talking about BI dashboards, we're gonna want it to be sort of sub-second. And this is where Dremio's reflections are really going to come in clutch because they're going to enable us to go a lot faster, um, almost real time, uh, in a very easy to form. So in this case, right now it took thirteen, it took twenty one seconds to do it this way. And again, this this means it 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 had to figure out hey which rows belong into each passenger account, okay, and then calculate the average time, okay. Cool. So then here's the average distance per number of passengers in the taxi okay and you see you have some weird outliers like apparently there were rides that had 255 passengers um but you know these are the kind of anomalies that you would then dig deeper into the data for we do like data validation data cleanup things like that okay but we can see it took 21 seconds now what we're going to do is i am going to turn on reflection so how do i do that so here i see the details panel for this particular data set okay so again, once I go to this data set, I will have the details panel here on the side. You're gonna see right here, I can open up the details panel so I can see a bigger details panel. And you can see right here, it says reflections, <clears throat> okay? So you're gonna have two options here, raw reflections and aggregate re reflections. And raw reflections are essentially um, like materialized views in the sense, again, they're creating that raw row acceleration. So you would use this for like maybe you have a join on several tables that you know you want to speed up. You don't want to have that join run every single time. 
Um, you would use this when maybe you have a view that's like maybe three layers deep and you don't really need to run all those previous layers every single time. Uh, there's a couple of different, or maybe you're using like a, a MySQL table or Postgres table or some sort of other non iceberg source. And you know, you don't want the queries that Dremio is pushing down to that source to compete with the operational queries that might be on that same database. You can create a reflection. So that way when Dremio queries that table in MySQL, it's going to use its reflection instead of sending that query down to MySQL. And then that MySQL query competing against any other queries in your operational apps. There's a lot of different reasons you might want to do this. So let me just quickly show you how that works. So if I were to click here on raw reflection, okay, I can click on it. That would just basically make a raw reflection, but I can go to advance and I could actually choose which fields I want to optimize for, how I want those fields sorted in the reflection. How do I want them partitioned in the reflection? So that way I can actually have a reflection that is optimized for the particular queries that I, I expect. So if I expect a lot of queries by passenger account, I can sort it based on those numbers. So I can optimize how that reflection gets materialized. Okay, now going back to sort of the main reflections. So that's raw reflections. Now, if I go to here to aggregation reflections, which is what I really want, because again, we are doing an aggregation queries, particularly one with a group by statement. Okay, that's really when you're doing a lot of group buys is really when you want to use these aggregation reflections. What I can do is then I can then choose which fields I want to optimize for and what measures I want to, to optimize for. Okay, and it'll come up with, it'll initially give me some suggestions, but I can always drag and drop and change these around. Okay, cool. Okay, so this looks good to me. So I'm gonna hit save. And what this is gonna do is that now Dremio is gonna begin building the reflection. Okay, so you'll see that right over here. So you'll see when this is done, this will actually have like a size. So you'll know how big that reflection is. So that way later on, if you're, if you're like, okay, hey, I wanna see how big these reflections are and maybe do some cleaning up, uh, you can do that. Another cool thing about Dremio is that it's making using these reflections even easier. Okay, recently they instituted a reflection recommendation feature. So in this case, instead of you having to figure out, hey, when is it a smart idea to use a reflection and having to learn all these reflection best practices, which you should still do, it's not a bad thing to know. Um, basically, Dremio will monitor the queries going on on your cluster and will actually make recommendations on the specific reflections that will optimize, that'll, that'll give you a good bang for your buck, okay? It'll, it'll optimize a good number of queries that typically come in, okay? So that way you're not creating reflections that don't necessarily um, give you as much bang for your buck, okay? So you can see here, it's done created, so I can actually see a footprint size of how big that reflection is. Okay, good, so now what I can do is I can go back to my SQL runner. Okay, I can go find that query again, okay? Oh. Okay, and that was, okay, let me just go back over this, this way. Okay, back to the data set, back to New York City taxi trips. Okay, okay, and there's, no, that's not the query that we ran. Here's the query. Okay, and nope, that's the iceberg one. Uh, okay, cool, 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 cool. I think that tab uh, got closed. So let me go back and go copy that query. So another cool thing you can do is you can go to the jobs tab and I can see those queries I ran in the past. Okay, so I can see right here, this is the one I want right here. Select average trip distance. So I can click right here and I can see that SQL query right here. I can just go copy it, go back to my SQL runner and then just pop that in there. Okay, let's run that query and let's see how long it takes this time around. So I'm gonna hit run. So last time it took 21 seconds. Okay. Okay, this time it took four seconds. Okay, now let's take a look over here in the jobs panel. Okay. Okay, and see this little exclamation point right here. Okay. That means that this query was accelerated by reflection. So that means it used the reflection to, it used the constructed reflection to help enhance the query. Okay. And again, Dremio not only uses the reflection, Dremio is also doing some caching on the side. So if I were to go back and run that query again, okay, it'll probably be maybe a tiny bit faster this time again. So we did four seconds before and see this time it's sub seconds. So you have like sort of two things that are going on. You have the reflection that gives a much quicker material item to query. 
And then you have sort of also Dremio's underlying caching going on, particularly what's called the columnar cloud cache. So basically, if it notices that certain parquet files from your S from your S3 or whatever your cloud storage is, is being accessed very frequently, it's going to cache those files. So underneath, it's also caching files, so that way when you're running the sim similar queries over and over again, it can access those files even quicker, and that also reduces your network costs on your cloud storage. So basically, again, faster queries means your compute doesn't have to last as long, okay? So that's gonna save you money. Reflections are gonna save you money in that same way that it improves performance, but also reflections allow you to create accelerated data structures, you know, um, that are more reusable. Okay, so in this case, you'll get a lot more bang out of one reflection than you necessarily would out of like one materialized view. So you need less of them. So that means less storage for these accelerating data structures. So that's also going to save you money. And then three, with the C3 cloud cache, you're going to reduce the number of requests that are going to go to your cloud storage to execute these queries, which is also going to save you money and improve performance. So every lever in Dremio's design is all about, again, reducing cost and performance, but also giving you a pretty easy UI. As you can see here, this is a pretty easy and intuitive way for anyone to have access to all of their data. I can see all of my data here. I can curate it. I can run my SQL. And then as you saw in the previous video before this, I can go pull it into my notebook pretty easily using Aeroflight. And most BI tools use JDBC and ODBC connections. Dremio supports JDBC, ODBC connections. So you can connect all your favorite BI tools. Um, you know, and even better, okay, just to kind of demonstrate one thing. Okay, uh, let's go back to the data set. No, I want to go back to the data set. Okay. You see these two buttons over here? There's built-in integrations for Tableau in Power BI. So literally, if I just want to bring up this specific data set into Tableau, I can just click this button and it's going to give me a file to establish that connection with those BI tools and I'm off to the races. Okay, so it's, you know, doesn't get easier than that. And again, when you add also the generative AI features, uh, the, the, the auto scaling features and the flexibility in your engines, uh, Dremio is a great tool for consuming your data, whether it's on your data lake or elsewhere. But again, when you have it on your data lake, um, you know, you really get that true data lake house experience where your data lake feels like a data warehouse. Okay, which essentially sort of is the future of data warehousing, right? We have one data and we can warehouse it in one place. So uh, my name is Alex Merced. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this tour of Dremio Cloud over the last several videos. Um, there's a lot more you can do with Dremio Cloud. Go read the docs. I will be making more videos on specific like Dremio functions and whatnot, but those will be over there on the Dremio YouTube channel. So make sure you subscribe to the Dremio YouTube channel. You can get to that pretty easily by going to youtube.com slash Dremio, okay? where you can find a lot of videos on all sorts of really cool things. Okay, so with that, um, I'll see you all later. Have a great day. And again, make sure you also subscribe and like this video and subscribe to this channel because there'll be a lot more data-related content to come. I'll see you all later.